thank you very much. Let me <clears throat> first of all recognize in our presence our president, His Excellency Charles Savre and Mrs. Savre. Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, Minister of Public Works. Honorable Kelvin Daru, the parliamentary representative for the St. Joseph constituency. My other colleagues, cabinet colleagues who are here present. Your Excellency Lukun, Ambassador of the People's Republic of China to the Commonwealth of Dominica. Your Excellency Steve Farrell, the Secretary to the Cabinet. Ms. Dennis Edwards, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Public Works. Other Permanent Secretaries, Mr. Fan, the Project Manager of the China Railway 14 Bureau Group Corporation Limited, and the contractors on this project. Mr. Kendall Johnson, the Chief Technical Officer. Pastor Colin Bacchus, members of the media, other invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, and of course the residents of Layu and St. Joseph in particular, good afternoon. I wish first of all to express on behalf of the people of Dominica our profound gratitude and thanks to the government of the People's Republic of China. And I want for His Excellency the Ambassador to convey to the leadership of China and the people of China our gratitude for this very generous gift. Now, China is a vast country, but China also has its own challenges. Like all the countries in the world, there is poverty in China as well. There are communities that are still underdeveloped. So these resources which are being spent here in Dominica could have easily been spent in many villages across the length and breadth of China. But the Chinese government and the Chinese people are sharing with us what they have based on their own generosity and their commitment to international development, but also fundamentally because of the extraordinary good relations which exist between Dominica and the People's Republic of China. So we're always very grateful to you, Ambassador, and your people because the Chinese government are dairy first in good times, but we also know we can rely on them in period of adversity. And Ambassador, we shall be eternally grateful to your people and country for this continued friendship and generosity. And lest we forget, when we established relations with China in 2004, it was done based on the principal position and recognition of international law that there is but one China and that the People's Republic of China is the legal government of the whole of China. So we as a government decided to recognize international law and to respect the one China policy. And through this friendship over the years, it has been proven that we can rely on China as a proven partner. So Excellency, rest assured of my personal and that of the government's commitment and adherence to the One China policy, and that we shall continue to work with you for the peaceful reunification of the whole of China. I want to say to us here in Dominica, that we must continue to demonstrate and express our gratitude to people who are kind to us. Because sometimes in our society, people believe that these things must be done and there's no need to show gratitude for it being done. This is a major investment in excess of 10 million EC dollars. And many people would say, well, this money could have been spent elsewhere or in another part of Dominica. But the government recognizes the importance of this link road to the economic development of Dominica. This part of the country lends itself to tremendous tourism potential and also agriculture. And we believe with the improvement of the infrastructure, the farmers and 
and, and those who benefit directly and indirectly from the tourism industry will see greater yields in their return and on their investments. Now, this bridge is part of a wider project that has been envisaged, envisioned by the government. And as you have been told, we have in fact contracted a loan from the CDB, the Caribbean Development Bank, to allow for the reconstruction of the washed away roads along the Layu Valley. There are designs, there were some designs that have been presented to us by the contracting firm, architectural firm, and we have decided that there needs to be some review of certain segments of the road. Because the whole idea for us in reconstructing the road is to, as far as practically possible, to avoid the, river, the edges of the river, or the, or the river bank, and move more inland to create greater safety for road users. So there is some reviewing of the design that needs to be done. And once that is returned, we will move to the next phase of tendering and commencement of the construction of the roads. We will have to borrow more money because with the passage of Hurricane Maria, it has certainly increased the scope and in fact complexity of this works. So there we'll have to contract additional sums. You're talking about to fix the Layu Valley area from the Layu Bridge to this place and just beyond um, the section going to Layu Park. The state will need to provision $91 million. So when people tell you, well, the government should do this and should do that, they must also appreciate the extent of the resources, the funding required for this thing, because it's easy for us to say what needs to be done. But there is a cost to all what we need to do. And Dominica is not a country where you take a, a grader and you just grade a flat piece of 10 mile road and you lay some tarish on it and you surface it the next day. We have to deal with rivers like these. We have to deal with mountains and, and slopes. We have to deal with water courses running across the roads. We have to deal with mid massive bridges like this. This is a massive bridge to build. Many countries in the Caribbean do not have to contend with that. So the cost of construction in Dominica and, and islands like ours, you know, is higher than most countries. I mean, if you have to put your mind from driving from the Douglas Charles Airport to Roseau, you can appreciate the number of bridges which you have to cross to get to Roseau. And one appreciates the cost to these things. There's no way in, 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 in these islands where you have so many water crossings from one point to the other. In countries like Antigua, one bridge becomes uh, a spectacle. Just one bridge. You know, um, that's the sheer cost of this infrastructure. But we are committed to, to this as we have done in the past because it is under this government that we have reconstructed the road from Roseau to the Douglas Charles Airport, enlarging the road. Uh, enlarging the bridges, all the bridges were one lane bridges. We started the reconstruction of the Eolibla Highway. It was affected by Tropical Storm Erica and, we, and we're thankful to the Chinese government for committing to have those roads repaired, including the construction of the three new bridges. I have given clear instructions to the Ministry of Public Works, to the Minister, that Come September, I would like for the ministry to sign a contract for the commencement of the Roseau Enhancement Project. That project is, is critical to the country's continued economic and social advancement. And we are putting in the budget this year funds to effect that phase of the Roseau Enhancement Project. And part of this is not only the new sidewalks and the new drainage system, but in building greater resilience 
the idea is to have all of the electrical lines, the telephone lines, in underground docks um, to allow for greater, greater aesthetics, but more fundamentally for greater resilience in our country. Because we would like to transform the city of Roseau into a, one of the resilient cities and to let the country appreciate what we're talking about when we mean building greater resilience so that Roseau itself will become a template for what the rest of the country will look like. On this ro roadway from the Pocasse Junction, the roundabout, sorry, Pocasse, to the junction going up to Sultan, the government has signed a contract for the complete resurfacing and rehabilitation of the section of the road to the tune of close to about $4 million. So that contract has been signed. You would have seen some preparatory work um, taking place. The challenge we have is that we have only one company in Dominica who is doing asphalting, and we have to wait for when that person is available to do those roads. So, but the contract has been signed, and there are no portals now because the preparatory work has been done on that section of the road, and we hope in the next few weeks we can have this road completely resurfaced. My friends from the east, and I see um, my dear friend, um, Honorable Peter Seja from the east here, we had this first phase of the rehabilitation of the, from the Bois Diab to, um, all the way to, to Delis, the certain intermittent sections. But we're happy to see now that some of the sections um, have been resurfaced and it has given the people of the east an appreciation for what the roadway from the roundabout in Pocasse to all the way Delis will look like in the next few years. And we are committed to investing the resources there, to improving the infrastructure in the east and making the safety of the road users and the residents of the east more, more enhanced and, and to complement some of the work we're doing there in, in agriculture, in housing for the people of the east. So we're committed to moving with the next phase of this very important project. The government is firmly committed to the construction of the international airport. We believe that this airport will enhance our economic and social development. I have heard some, you see, it's interesting in this country, you know. You have to appreciate, because you see, running a country is serious business. You can't make a joke of it. Because you are entrusted as a government with the lives and the future of our people. And you can't say one thing tonight and tomorrow morning when you wake up because your head is hurting you, you say something differently. There must be consistency. You must be serious about it. There are people who are saying they want international airport. Now that it is coming, they're telling us there's no need for international airport. Use the money for something else. You know, but I'm saying to you that this party, which I have the honor to lead, will build the international airport for the people of Dominica to enhance our economic opportunities. And don't be surprised if before the middle of next year, you see the signing of a contract for the International Airport in Dominica. When we say we're building with greater, for great, greater resilience, one has to understand what that really means in simple terms. It means having an appreciation for your environment, having appreciation for the risk and the hazards which your environment has, and building and adapting in a manner that if the disasters were to visit us, we will be in a better position to withstand it, and if we're impacted, we'll be in a better position to recover from it much quickly than we're currently doing. And this is why if you look at the construction of our homes, and we started really this process before the passage of Maria. That is what we said to you when we designed and reconstructed, for example, the West Coast, the West Bridge in Roseau. And if you recognize that West Coast Bridge was not impacted by the hurricane, because it was built with that in mind, we said if a storm 
like Erica were to come back to visit Dominica, the Rosa Bridge would be in a better place to withstand it. And we saw this happen with Maria, where not even the paint on the railings were, were washed away by the hurricane. And in the quest of the government to build 5,000 homes, we would like for each of those homes, every one of those homes, to be a hurricane shelter in, its sense, in itself. Based on the construction method, the quality of the construction, the use of the material, you can stay in your homes and see this hurricane through. Because we would like to minimize the number of us who have to go to hurricane shelters. And the government is committed to building about 5,000 new homes to provide for our citizens in Dominica. And we're well on our way. We've signed a contract for 1,000. We have signed contracts for apartments for about 600 apartment units. The government itself is using additional resources to build homes for individuals, utilizing some funds from the uh, government of Venezuela to build um, several homes across Dominica. And we're well on our way. And we're committed to this. But we're here today to commission this very important bridge as a, a gift from the government of People's Republic of China. And I want to thank the farmers in particular of Laiyu and St. Joseph for your patience and understanding. In development, there'll always be inconveniences. And I am very appreciative of the fact that you recognize that. For you to get a better connection, there were sacrifices which had to be made. And today, we're seeing the results and the, of our patience, our understanding, and our tolerance. And I want to thank you, the people of St. Joseph and Laiyu for that. I also want to thank the minister, the, the previous minister, Minister Blanchard, and current minister, Dr. McIntyre, and the staff of the ministry for your efforts in providing guidance and support to the Chinese team to see this project through. I want to thank the China Railway Fortune Bureau Group. You know, we really want to have to sometimes emulate the diligence of our Chinese brothers and sisters, their commitment to hard work, their commitment to long hours, their commitment to working with pride and a demonstration of the strong relationship which exists between Dominic and China. And these people, they worked very hard on this project, you know, night in, night, night and day. And, you know, we really want to thank them because had it not been for the hurricane, we would have commissioned the bridge much earlier because the, it was really, should, should have taken about 12 months to construct and they were well within the 12 months. Unfortunately, the hurricane came, but they were able to deliver it quickly thereafter and we're very grateful to the um, Railway 14th Bureau for their comfort dedication. But I also want to thank uh, the ambassador and his, and his staff of the embassy personally, and also the commercial counselor for the efforts which you put into this project, your regular visits, and you know, sometimes you, you wonder whether they're working for us or they, they're here representing China, but it, it tells you about the strong um, and tight relationship which exists between our two countries and we work together to address issues as they come to ensure that the Dominican people can benefit as quickly as possible from those very timely interventions. So I say to you, all of you, that this is yet another project which the government is placing at the disposal of the people of Dominica. We have a long way to go to recovering and rebuilding our country from the ravages of Hurricane Maria. But I believe with understanding, with patience, with commitment to hard work from our people, with perseverance, and understanding that everything won't be back up in a month's time or a year's time, we will eventually get there as a people. Because where we are now, from where we were on the morning of September 19, we have made great progress in Dominica. Great progress in Dominica. There is a lot more that has to be done, but we must not lose sight of what we have been able to achieve because you will achieve more by recognizing the good that you have done. And, I, and, you know, and it speaks to our own tenacity, our own resilience of people. You know, getting up next morning and not asking what, must we, what should we do, we see what needs to be done, we do it, and we back up. The farmers are, are planting, 
and we are ensuring that the markets are continue to be created to absorb the agricultural produce. The cruise ships came back to Dominica in January of this year, a few months after the hurricane, with all your roads blocked, all your bridges blocked, you know, and, and you were able, and I will commend the leadership of the minister and the staff, we were able to put things in place to allow for the cruise ships to come back just a few months after the hurricane. And we have seen the return of Carnival after a very long time. And these people don't come to your country because they, they like you. They, they come because they think, they see that there's the opportunities to make money. They, they, have, they have things to be seen. And because of the commitment to restoring things as a government, we're able to see cruise ships coming back and Carnival come in there to do, do their own assessment. Carnival teams came in there several times to do their own assessment. When they came the first time, they, they told us we need to do one, two, three, four, five things. We did them. They came back. They, they highlighted a couple of things. We had to do it. And only after this, they were satisfied that we were able to put everything in place. They're back. And, you know, there's nothing sweeter to have a cruise ship during the summer. I, and, and, and that is what the vendors and the people love so much. That there is an opportunity to get business year-round. And we're going to move very speedily to with the construction of the cruise village because the cruise village is important for us so we will be moving we'll be building a new cruise village and the ferry terminal will be within that cruise village and the government intends to declare that cruise village as a duty-free zone it will be a completely duty-free zone uh, with all of the facilities and the whole idea is to continue to attract business from martinique and guadalupe so the people of Martinique and Guadeloupe can come here, buy groceries from Dominica because it's much cheaper than in Guadeloupe and Martinique, and be able to purchase these items duty-free and export out of Dominica, create great, bringing the foreign exchange in Dominica. So we're putting this plan together, and we're hoping that in the next few weeks we will have a concept uh, for this new for this for this port. In addition to that, we'll be building a new container port. What we have currently is something that has been built over the last 50, 60 years, and every so often a piece is added and so on. So there was never a master plan to build the Woodbridge Report. And under normal circumstances, it is challenged, and we saw the difficulties it had with regards to the hurricane. And we need to bring in a modern port with modern facilities, and that we committed to building as well. And to help transform and to expand the economy. Because with this port, we believe we can certainly see greater business taking place um, in Dominica, creating more jobs for, for, for us and growing our economy. So there are exciting plans ahead for, for, for this country. I believe if we continue to work together, we can certainly achieve those plans. Because we have friends like China who are standing with us and who are assisting us in getting to a point where we have greater economic growth and reduction of poverty in our country. But at the end of the day, we our people must continue to work together. We always must continue to be positive. We, we must not always be negative about our country. This is our country. And there are people who say they love Dominica but whenever they, you hear them speak, it is about bringing down Dominica. You know, how can we have a disaster? And there are some of us who are working hard to help each other and to help our country. And there are people with their, arm, with their arms folded when there's so much to be done. This is an important question I believe that each of us must ask ourselves in this country. And to recognize who are already serious about Dominica and Dominicans and the well-being of Dominica and Dominicans. And I'm sure you, you have the answer in your minds. The answer is very clear. But we are committed to modernizing the country. We're committed to building the world's first climate resilient nation. Because the world is with us. We have to be with ourselves. And so I want to express our real profound gratitude to China for its continued friendship, 
its continued commitment, its continued assistance. You know, it is, it is comforting as a leader of a small country to know that if you go to bed or when you go to bed and you wake up and there's a disaster, that there's a friend who, you, who, don't, who will not even have to wait for you to call them. They reach out to you and say, how can we help? And that is China where Dominica is concerned. Because I will tell you, when my friend's predecessor was the ambassador here, we made a submission to, on their request for help when we had the destruction of this area. And it is the Chinese government, the, the ambassador, who came forward and said, we will not only give you what you requested, but we also want to build you a bridge in Layu to replace the one that was damaged. They offered us the bridge. They offered us the bridge in addition to the other interventions, the building of homes, etc., which they committed to. And that is the, these are the kinds of friends which this government has cultivated and harnessed over the years. And there is no other entity in Dominica that can boast of having such friends in high places and big places. <laughs> and as a small country like ours, and you know, we all grew up and we had, we had godmothers and godfathers and so forth. And we know how, how, how good and beneficial a godmother and a godfather was in those days. And so that's what we have in China. And it is based, you know, I keep telling people, when you have friends, even on a personal level, there must be sincerity. You can't play games. So you see me, at all levels of friendship, I don't play games. When we say to China that we support the one China policy, we don't only whisper it in the ears, we say it for the whole world to hear. And we stand by it because we do so as a matter of principle. And they are our friends and therefore we have to have their back as they have ours. And that is what you need. It is not about being flip-flop. And there are times sometimes, as, as Prime Minister, I may take decisions, or I may take decisions to support particular countries, and there's maybe citizens who might, get, might not be comfortable with I, what I do at particular times. But I know over time, they realize the benefit of it. Because when we took a decision to establish relations with, with China, there were people in Dominica who were not happy about it. But I am satisfied that they have converted to recognizing that that decision in 2004 was a good move. And all we could have said now, some say no, it should have been done long time ago. But the only thing was that I was not prime minister before 2004. <laughs> But I want to, to thank, you know, thank you, Ambassador, and thank your government. You know, we're really, we're really grateful for this, and this is just part of a wider project. Because I know, you know, people will say, well, okay, well, the bridge, and we're on the bridge, we're not fixed yet, and blah, 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 and they'll take a little picture and put this up and so on. So there's a wider project to this um, that will complement this bridge, the reconstruction of this road, and turn it into... Uh, uh, a masterpiece uh, um, of, uh, of a road project for the people of Layou Valley and, and elsewhere, but the whole country, because many of us use this road as, as a quick run to the airport and, 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 and the interior of the country. So I want to thank you again, all of you for being here, Your Excellency and Mrs. Sa Savary, all of you, Ambassador, thank, thanks very much on behalf of the people of Dominica and the farmers. And I'm sure they'll meet you and be able to extend the gratitude to you. But I want to say thanks on behalf of the farmers of um, Layou Park 
and um, Be and um, Saint Joseph and Lai itself. And the minister is only able to be the minister of agriculture. The deputy prime minister has a function in his constituency, but he will need to come to speak to the farmers now that the bridge is open and say, what can we, what else can we do with the farmers here to ensure that they can plant more and 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 make more money for themselves and for their families. So we will arrange to come to see you now that the bridge is completed and to see what else we can do to help you um, take care of yourself and your families and of course to grow food and to export and bring the foreign exchange into our country. So God bless all of you and may God bless the People's Republic of China, may God bless the Commonwealth of Dominica. I thank you.